Yomi Adeyemi is a managing director with a unique story. His tenure at the helm of Fortress Capital began at the start of a stock market downturn that left investors and market operators bewildered as they came to grips with an unprecedented bear run. I took over the management of this company in April 2008, to be specific. And um, uh, for me, the market was, that was really when the market started going down. So obviously, from a business perspective, most of the projections that we made were, uh, were really not realistic at, at some point in time. But, uh, but behind all that, we, um, we have a very strong belief that the way the market works in cycle, that obviously the market was going to come back. So, and the only thing we just had to do was to, um, to tweak our strategy a bit uh, uh, that we ensure that, yes, we, we try to minimize um, our um, uh, operational cost. And, um, and look out for investments that we believe would, um, uh, would, uh, would give good returns. The drop in brokerage business led to a focus on increasing operational efficiency and proprietary trading for many of the over 220 stockbroking companies that had to endure one of the longest and sharpest market declines in the history of Nigeria's capital markets. The brokers were a small part of a larger investment community smarting from huge losses. I joined as the DG of the Securities and Exchange Commission in January of 2010 on the back of total investor apathy. We'd had an unprecedented decline uh, in our markets. Uh, we'd hit bottom in February of 2009. Uh, the market cap was less than four trillion naira at that point in time. A number of investors felt they'd lost their life savings. Uh, some had sold homes uh, and put in the market. Uh, we'd had uh, incidences of Ponzi schemes, uh, we'd had a variety of market abuses, uh, share price manipulation, insider dealing, uh, and other forms. Uh, and so there was just a total uh, crisis of confidence in our markets, and people were wondering where the apex regulator was uh, at that point in time. In 2008, uh, the index was at 31,000 at the end of the year. And that was, it was, the market was down 45%. In 2009, the index had dropped from 31.45, 31,000 in 2008 to 20,000 in 2009. The market dropped 33.78% in 2009. If you add the two together, it gives you the scale of how bad it was. There was a brief rebound in 2010 and the market went up 18.93. Well, if you know that the market had gone down 45% and 33% and was up 18%, for practical purposes, it was still way, way down. In 2011, last year, the market was down 16.31. So basically, those four years captured the very worst. And what was happening was that people were losing, depending on what stocks they had bought, up to 70% of the value of their stocks. Some lost almost 80%. So basically, you bought something at 100, you know, it was worth 100 naira you were suddenly worth 29. Uh, for those people that, you know, the banks are no more, they've lost their shirt. And you will recall that some of those banks were trading at some crazy price. The market was clearly very overbought. It was really a bubble market. It was created by far too much liquidity. Um, the reason for the liquidity was that the banks had just consolidated so they were much larger. And then they come to the market and raise capital themselves. Now they had to spend that capital. And an awful lot of that money, which was leveraged, then went into the stock market. And it took it up to levels that were clearly unsustainable. Insurance companies were ridiculously hit. Banks were seriously hit. And then investors went from wealth to debt. And you, you, have, to, you have to think about what the, psychological, what, what the psychological impact of that. One day you're worth 100 million, the next day you're worth negative 80 million. It's, and all this happened in the space of 10 months. The seeds of the market downturn were sown in the years prior to the 2008 peak. The market was going up and so everyone wanted to take part in the market. So you had those who through the stock exchange were able to list and also raise money through the stock exchange. And then you had situations where they had a flurry of private placements. It's estimated there were hundreds of private placements done with lack of liquidity where for a lot of the people who took part in it, they were promised that there was going to be listing which some of them had not listed, so the illiquid. 
even some of the projections, you look at the financial projections a lot of those companies made, even those that were listed on the exchange, some of their projections were just outlandish. And, but the market was, I had those confidence in the market and so it just seemed like it was never going to go down. In 2007 to early 2008, what we really had was the proverbial bonfire of the vanities. Private placements were, the issuances that were hidden in the market were generally lightly regulated and investors were investing based on nothing more than past experience in other investments that in a lot of times were unrelated and the level of scrutiny of investments was very low. On the flip side, you had banks that were awash with capital that they had to put to work. And for them, it was, it was a no-brainer to do. Price manipulation, if you saw companies that are about to enter the, go into the market, suddenly that share price started moving up. You saw the allegations of insider trading, um, opaque, no lack of transparency within the market and just um, brokers selling clients stocks without informing clients, just various kind of infractions which there seem to be no uh, regulatory punishment. A global financial crisis and attempts by the NSC management to stem the tide only added more impetus to the bear run. It happened to coincide with the, the foreign markets collapsing and a lot of people having, to, a lot of international fund managers having to pull out of Nigeria even though they didn't necessarily want to their books were being so hammered offshore that they had to actually sell stocks that they had a profit in. The stock exchange itself did not handle it very well when they started trying to put um, circuit breakers in place at 1% per, per day. Those don't work. When the market's going to go down, all they did was extend the, the pain over nine months, which could have happened over two or three, and I don't believe the market would have fallen as much had they not had the, stock, had, had they not had the circuit breakers in place. With investors' confidence at its lowest ebb, authorities in Nigeria's capital market had to begin the tough task of cleaning up the mess. On the back of the crisis of confidence, um, I think people, first of all, did not recognize that the investor is king in the capital market. And so uh, establishing, first of all, a shared objective uh, for the capital markets, which investors can connect to, capital market operators can connect to, and we as the regulator can lead, was very, very critical. That objective was to build a world-class capital market, because a world-class capital market is one that, first of all, has as its anchor integrity. And some of what we suffered was just not the global financial crisis, but the crisis of confidence was coming from some level of market abuse. So we had to re-establish that this is a market where, as a regulator, we would not permit infractions, that we had zero tolerance for anything that was improper. Okay, so we saw the reform objectives. Run us through some of the actions we've seen you take since then. You will recollect that in 2010, there were two very widely publicized enforcement actions that we took. The first one uh, was with respect to the intervened banks where we alleged that there were a variety of market abuses and it led us to take 260 individuals and entities to the Investment and, and Securities Tribunal, essentially the court for issues related to the capital markets. The second one related to the Nigerian Stock Exchange. The Nigerian Stock Exchange is the most visible symbol of our capital markets because stock exchanges are the visible symbol of any capital market and ensuring that it was operating on the basis of uh, world class, uh, on the basis of best practice, ensuring that the leadership understood what it meant to build a world class market, that if there were any instances or corporate governance weaknesses or malfeasance, that that was behind us. A key element of the changes was the appointment of a new leadership for the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Emmanuel Ikazobo was appointed as interim administrator in August 2010 to start the process of cleaning up the bourse. Subsequently, former Wall Street executive Oscar Onyema was appointed as the substantive CEO in April 2011 to drive and develop a long-term vision for a world-class stock market. One of the first things we said is that we're going to set out to build a very solid foundation for the Nigerian capital market. A solid foundation means that there's a lot of hard work to be done. And it's a multi-pronged approach work that needs to be done to build that foundation because it's the medium long term we're looking at. A capital market is not a quick fix, get rich quick scheme. 
Yeah, it's got to be a fundamental part of uh, our national economy. I can remember very clearly uh, uh, when we started, we looked at the compliance levels in terms of reporting for companies. Yeah, and uh, we found out that a significant number of the companies listed in the exchange were actually not reporting uh, within the timings that is required. Yeah, and uh, how can investors actually have a fair discovery of price if indeed information is out of date? So that was fundamentally impacting confidence. So one of the things we did then was actually we identified the companies, we spoke to them, gave them a deadline because I thought it was important that we actually work hand in hand. And those that required support, we gave them the support required to actually come up to speed. But it comes to a point where a regulator has to act as a regulator. Yeah, and we suspended 48. People thought, no, you can't do that. And we said, well, just watch it, we've done. In addition to introducing new products, such as exchange-traded funds launched last year, other elements of a five-year plan include the introduction of derivative products, such as futures and options. One of the most exciting initiatives of the NSE this year is the takeoff of market making. If you noticed last year when we started, uh, uh, one of the things we did within three months was say, these are what we're going to deliver in 2011. Yeah, uh, uh, there were some things within our control, things outside our control. We're not going to give a hand, you know, throw our hands up, but we're going to advocate. And uh, you know, I'm really pleased to say the staff of the exchange, the wider market, have supported us, and we've delivered uh, uh, on the 2011 agenda. You know, we launched the first ETF in West Africa. Uh, uh, that's doing uh, uh, pretty well. Uh, uh, amongst other things, we revamped uh, our website. I think it's, it's, that's phase one, by the way. It's, a, it's more accessible, uh, uh, more user-friendly. People can get more information. We've got phase two and phase three uh, coming down the line. And we've looked at the market structure, the market structure that we had at that time, which is still part of the fundamental building block, was just not the right market structure. Because at the end of the day, it is the structure of the market that is going to drive the health of your market. What we saw in 2007, 2008 shows us exactly what, what happens when you have a market that is not ready for what it's doing. Uh, uh, what uh, the current leadership of the stock exchange, uh, Oscar Onyema and his team are doing are exactly what we need. Because if you create a system that has the right structures to handle international investors, to create the kind of liquidity that is necessary for people to move in and out in an orderly fashion, that way, very, that way a lot less value will be destroyed when people leave. The initiatives such as securities lending, uh, uh, short selling, uh, market making, yeah, uh, 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 and we can expand that into, you know, cost of doing business in our market, you know, uh, uh, you know and uh, quite a number of other ways that broker dealers interface with the wider market participants. But specifically, with market making, securities lending, short selling, several attempts have been made to start this in the past, but it's quite a heavy lift. You know, we, we, we wrote the rules working with SEC from scratch for those three requirements. Uh, 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 we got the rules approved with a lot of input from market participants. And uh, as you remember, in April this year, we announced 10 market makers in a very transparent, open manner. They chose their baskets. Uh, and, uh, you know, the market makers are now making markets. This will be uh, the rollout started, obviously, or the market making started officially in September 18, 2012. Uh, and that process will take a period of six months. After the break, we break down the 2012 market rally with analysts and fund managers and hear more about how far it can go.